Today I want to talk about render kernels and how we can use the PMC kernel to get rid of noise inside of Octane without any post. As always, before the tutorial starts, check out my 3D assets and my Patreon. I'm now posting one tutorial a week there that follow my workflow a bit more in depth. So if you're interested, check it out and let's get denoising. Okay, so here we are in cinema. We've got a scene sampling away here at 248 samples under PMC's default settings. So there's going to be a little bit of noise and I'm going to take you through these settings and show you how to bring them down to get rid of the noise. Now, I want you to understand how to use PMC. So I'm going to ramble on for a minute here and when to use it too, because you've kind of got to understand that if you use a denoiser of any kind, whether it's in After Effects or it's the one that Octane gives you here, which won't work with PMC by the way, if you send this to the picture viewer with it turned on, like I have here, um, which I'm going to turn on uh, just for example purposes, but if you leave that on when you send it to the picture viewer, uh, the image is going to render forever and kind of break and you don't really want that, it's a little bit tedious and I learned that the hard way so never leave that on if you're going to render with PMC but anyway, when when do you want to use PMC? Well, you either want to use it in interior scenes scenes with a lot of fog with noise you can't get rid of even the, the noiser can't crack without making your image look like it's been painted maybe some scenes with caustics and a lot of reflections that's kind of when you want to use PMC. Now, PMC makes a lot more decisions than the other two kernels, and it's what you call adaptive. So the Octane manual describes this as mutating. And what it does is instead of equally distributing samples across the image, it adapts and it looks at the variation between the pixels and the parts of the image that need more samples. So, of course, that makes it slower because it's sampling, analyzing, and of course adapting is doing all these things. So it can come in very useful with scenes with caustics and it has a lot of settings that you might be unfamiliar with. It has some familiar ones too, but it has a lot of settings that you're typically gonna be using direct lighting and path tracing don't have. So, so the advantage can be that even though you're getting fewer samples because it's spending so much time deciding how to do everything, you can get rid of noise faster in specific cases like this scene here. We can do things like control where the light goes between the light spot and the dark spot, which you can do in direct lighting and path tracing, but we can do it a bit more vigorously here. So on that note, what I'll do is take you through the settings. Now, one thing that's important to pay attention to here is that all of my noise in this scene is in a dark area. And that's why I chose this scene, because we're going to try and get rid of that. And we're at 1200, uh, 248 here, and you can kind of tell by this point, this isn't going to clear up. I've got hot pixel removal down at 0.5. If I'm to bring that all the way up, you can see that it's doing a bit. So if you don't know about that, that's something to pay attention to. But if you bring it all the way down, it can just make your image look horrible. So point, don't go any lower than 0.5, somewhere around here will do. Now we'll pop into our settings and you can see I've got them untouched. This is how it should look by default. Now I'm going to start with these settings. And these are pretty much all I'm going to go over. So if you look at the scene, we've got the noise there and we know where it is and we want to get rid of it. So the first value we've got here is path turn power. Now if, you've, if you're very familiar with the other two engines, you'll know how to use this. And essentially increasing it will make it ignore dark areas and work on the image more plainly. Just kind of look at the image and say, okay, I'm going to sample it. You bring it down, it's going to look between the light rays and the dark bits, and it's going to spend more time here. So it can increase your render time, but it can get rid of noise. So generally, if I want to get rid of noise in a dark area, I do something like 0.1. Now, the second setting we've got is exploration strength. So what this does is it's kind of similar, but without the dark areas. It's going to determine how long it wants to spend time on each path. So generally, when it's up at 0.7, it's going to create a bit of a splotchy image. And you can see that here. Um, you can see the splotchiness. I would usually go for something around 0.2, but in a case like this, I would do something like 0.05 because we don't like these dark areas and we want to get rid of it. And you can see that that's took away the splotchiness and made the gray areas look more even. And the next setting is direct light importance. Now, it's kind of a given, 
But the way I can explain this is that if you crank this setting all the way up to 1, it's going to really concentrate on these sun rays here. If you crank it to 0, it's going to really concentrate on the dark areas. So if we leave it at 0.5, it's going to do it evenly. You should know that from float textures. So what I would probably do is do 0 0.025 and bring it really down because we're getting no noise here besides our reflections. Next up, you have max rejects. So this is a setting which can get you slightly quicker render time, but it's going to take away some detail. If you have a ton of reflections in your scene, I would not suggest bringing this down. I would suggest putting it up as much as you can, typically somewhere between 700 and 1000. If you do need a bit of speed, you can bring this down. Typically, I suggest just if you've got the power, pile that all the way up and leave it. Maybe try and balance it out a bit, but you're going to lose detail if you come down, although some of that detail could be considered noise, so that's a value you're going to want to play with. Now the next value, parallel samples, most of you will probably be a bit familiar with, but the best thing I can explain here is this doesn't really have much to do with noise, but you're going to affect your render time a bit, so if you've got a beefy computer in any form, just uh, throw it up. And with work chunk size, this is like the number of, as the Octane manual describes it, number of blocks done per kernel run. So it increases the memory requirement, but not the usage. So if you've got 32 gigs of RAM and you want to use those 32 gigs of RAM, crank it up. It's not going to use them, but it'll know that it can if it wants to. So that can effectively speed things up. Okay, so this is the scene completely sampled. As you can see, it looks better than it did earlier. At this point, this is where you, if you're still getting a bit of grain like I am here, this is where you'd want to say, okay, I'll take the samples to 496. I'll do that and show an image of what it looks like just to kind of tip over. But of course, that's double the render time. So you don't always want to take that route, but you know it's there because of the settings we've set up, it is going to take effect and it's going to keep targeting the dark areas and get rid of it, which is really what we want. So if you're using scenes with a lot of fog, you don't want to, or you're doing an interior scene, you don't want to use the noiser. This is definitely the way to go. Understanding PMC and the settings is brilliant and it's a perfect solution to getting rid of noise inside of Octane without going anywhere else or relying on a pass or the noise or whatever it is. I first used this for the first time a little while ago and it was on a scene with a lot of fog. And I messed around with the Zens and I, I, I resorted to looking into PMC and getting to know it, which is something I never bothered to touch before because I thought I'd never need it because I don't do a lot of interior renders or scenes with a lot of reflections. And I, the denoiser just wasn't getting rid of my noise. And I set up these PMC settings and I tweaked them around and what do you know, it got rid of all of it. So it's definitely something to be experimented with. I would say that max rejects is a little bit subjective. I could probably get rid of a bit of noise by taking it down here. Maybe putting it out wasn't the best thing to do, but it depends how much detail you want. So, you know, it's give or take there. But that's all I'm really going to talk about regarding PMC. I wanted to go over it quickly and make sure you understand it. And I hope now you know how to get rid of noise in Octane without resorting to horrible denoisers and After Effects or relying on hot pixels and the denoiser when it just won't budge that stubborn noise. Hey, thanks for watching this tutorial. I appreciate it a lot. I hope you learned something valuable and I always try my best to make sure I'm spreading what I know but also learning myself. I do believe as artists and as people we should always be learning and growing. If you're interested in keeping this channel ad free and getting access to more tutorials then please check out my Patreon and my Selfie for assets. On my store I typically sell project files from these tutorials and on my Patreon I post weekly exclusive tutorials just like I do here except they're more direct tips from my workflow and tips that maybe wouldn't perform so well in the YouTube algorithm. So please check them both out. Be sure to send me some of your renders at SketchyFX on Instagram and reach out if you ever have any questions. Thanks and I'll see you next time.